Hi guys, how are you? So nice to connect to you. My name is Laura from Pleiadian Healer at PleiadianHealer.com. And today I want to do a quickish review on a person that was suggested a few months ago and keeps coming up over and over again. And I think it's worth pointing out a few things. Let's put it that way. So we're gonna leave the new cage, the new age trap community behind for just one second. And we're gonna move on to the truther community. Wow, so it's gonna be the first truther to be reviewed, but more to come, the list is long. This is Archaics, Jason Brashears, Brashars, however even pronounces his last name. As it turns out, it might not even be his true last name but I'll get to that shortly. Um, so this is Jason from what he calls himself, Archaics. Note that the last letter is an X. An X is what a cross. When you do an X, you're also doing this, you're kind of warding something off, you're kind of building up a wall. Um, the wall stands in between the truth, right? So I'm gonna talk about these concepts a few moments down the line, but What's worth noting with this person is, and I think everyone was kind of enamored with him when he first came out because he had like these outlandish concepts with Phoenix this, Phoenix that, and oh my gosh, you're gonna dive so deep and yada yada. When I, I think when I first reached out to this guy, cause I did reach out, I did kind of want to just hear his opinion on certain things, but he never responded, which is another telltale sign that some of these people are just huge fakos, right? At first I thought it was, oh, maybe it's because my channel doesn't have enough followers, yada, yada. But no, he actually interviewed channel who had less followers, who had like a thousand followers. Most of those were men, not women. I do want to say that too. And the reason for that could very well be his prison sentence and what he was really in prison for, which we'll discuss shortly. But, you know, no offense, whatever. So when I reached out to him back in May, I think he had, he barely had 10,000 followers. And that's half a year ago, less than half a year ago. And lo and behold, now we're at what, 57,000, almost 60,000 at this point. And one of those recent videos, he was talking about getting on another platform, yada, yada. It's always the same with them, right? They're always like kind of seeming like they're about to get off YouTube, but it's never really the case for these people. And if they are just like Jordan Sather, they build up their community outside and still have their, uh, their follower cult around them. So this is his channel. Please note the X at the end of his name, not archaic, but archaic. X usually has to do with deception, okay? Which I do think this person is doing on a grand scheme uh, to a grand degree too. So great shirt, sarcasm, my gift to you all year long. I mean, whatever the humor is in there, it's whatever, right? He can do whatever he wants, but this is what he looks like, okay? And his logo, you know, first we'll just go into what is, uh, what's what really happened with this one. So when you look up his name, Jason Brashears, I'm just gonna pronounce it that way for the rest of this video, Sex Offender Texas, you will find a huge list of stuff. So this person makes you believe he was in jail for 30 years for kidnapping. He had a few interviews with other men on channels where he was interviewed by other men where he was saying, oh yeah, it was just kidnapping. It was just this and that. It is not true. He's a registered sex offender in Willis, Texas. That's a city in Texas or a little town in Texas, not even a city. You can find his address even, you know, you can just look it up. There's his address, what he looks like. And then this is why I'm saying his last name might just not be even what we think it is. Like it's here, they're saying it's Brashear. It's not Brashears with an S. There are other variations of his last name where you see his, his face in it too, you know? So it's very strange how they're leaving out certain letters in his last name. Usually a last name is pretty set. Brashear Jason Matthew. And you see this entire thing here, verification requirement annually. So the last photo that was reported was June 8th, 2022, okay? Weight, height, whatever, all of that. Um, so what was he really in jail for? Aggrav aggravated sexual assault, okay? That's not kidnapping. The victim age was 19. She was a female on April 23rd, 1991. He has a 30-year parole, mandatory supervision, all of that. So... 
here's a picture from 2021, 2019. There's nothing from 2020, which is a bit odd. Maybe that was because of the entire, you know, 2020, what happened in 2020. They weren't taking pictures of people then. Who knows? There's something from 2017, 2016. So I also see like a few changes in his face. Obviously, people get older, but kind of like his face structure is changing slightly too, right? He kind of looks a bit here in 2017, he looks like a bit different than he does now, in my opinion. So it could also be quality of cameras that they're using. But this does not look like kidnapping to me. I don't know about you guys. This looks like a pretty serious sentence. Uh, the difference between a sexual assault, which is basically a, it can be rape, it can be all those things, and aggravated. What's the difference? The reason you get 30 years as opposed to maybe just less than 30 years is because of the word aggravated. Aggravated has to do uh, with using a weapon during the assault, okay? Just to make that very clear, if people weren't aware of that difference, like I actually looked that up, I was like, oh, I wonder what the real difference is. So you just look up his name, you see a whole bunch of stuff, filed Fifth Circuit Courts of Appeal. So there's a whole bunch of stuff Jason filed from when he was in prison. Um, we see one here, okay? So we have plaintiff, defendant, so Jason, a Texas prisoner with this number, is serving a 30-year sentence for aggravated sexual assault with a weapon. They're saying it here, too. Appeals the dismissal of a civil rights suit as frivolous and for failure to state a claim, yada, yada. So you have, like, this huge document that's all public and out there in the open. What's his name in this document? So this document actually has the S. The other one didn't. You can just do your own research. There's another one right here on law.justia.com. Appeal from the 267th District Court of DeWitt County, Texas. You know, all these things. So it's all these appeals that Jason did when he was in prison still. I think I even came across this one document where he was like a worker in prison. They were putting these people to work, obviously he was kind of appealing for better clothing or something. I don't know. Something like that. I can't come across it anymore. I didn't like really do I pull up a whole bunch of these files just for this video, because I think just in and of itself, a person who claims they were in jail for 30 years for kidnapping and the actual offense is different. Like what's going on here? There's a form of disconnect between truth and fiction and truth and lies. Right. So he's obviously lying about this. I mean, one person in my Telegram group, group was saying, oh, he was just in the same car when it happened. Like, that's what he said in an interview somehow. And he was just watching how his friend or another person who he stole the car with, how he was actually doing that to the victim. But truth being told, who watches another person assault another person like that to such a degree and doesn't intervene or doesn't do anything. That's just another question I just want to put out there, no matter how old you are. Like these people were young, you know, this is like victims 19. He was probably younger too at that point. It's insanity. It's true insanity. It's actually disgusting. You know, it's, it's really plain outright wrong what happened here and 30 years in prison. Is that enough? I don't know. Everyone can kind of come up to their own conclusion with that. But at least tell everyone what you were really in prison for. You know, it wasn't kidnapping. It was this year. And it's all over. Your entire address is online. It's all over Google. You know, you can just pull it up blatantly out of the blue just by giving in your real name. So I came up with another. Um, I pulled up a few other sites. Bid shoot. Beware of Jason Brashear's gatekeeper and controlled opposition. You do have to wonder if that's what he really is. So there's an interesting one right here. The comments are always so interesting to me. One comment is, I do wonder if Jason is CGI. He has this black thing in an area right below the nose. From video to video, it changes size and shape and slightly location. That's an interesting view. I do think some of the other New Agers um, that are out there right now could possibly be CGI. So yeah, some truth is, I guess, could be too. So, um, you know, a lot of people are actually getting backlash by discrediting these huge truthers that blow up overnight. And so I came across a few more channels. If you just look up Archaic Roast, you got a lot, like you got roasted as a channel that roasts them regularly. And I think uh, she roasts them on certain things that she did, like liar, this and that. There's certain things he actually says in his videos. I don't have any intention of dissecting through any of his video because 
I just, I can't, you know, after seeing that here this year, which was basically sent to me. So I had a follower a month ago, I had a follower email me, oh, do you actually know what he was in prison for really? And just kind of look it up and you're like, oh, wow. Yeah, that's crazy that he's actually not saying that on his own channel or in interviews, right? No matter what the disconnect to reality is, you can't deny that. So this is a channel that does reviews on him. And then you also have other channels like Charlie Brown, Archaics, Overlord, Jason Brashears is a Freemason. You do have to wonder, you know, controlled opposition back and forth. Um, so I came up with this one video, which I want to read the comments, is Archaics a cult, okay? And there are 336 comments on this one. Um, the idea that he can get rare antique books in prison that we can't is completely insane. I kind of agree with that. It's, it's strange. It doesn't make sense. Um, and there's another one. When you actually, there was a comment, like, I spoke to one of his cult members on Facebook the other day. It was truly disturbing. I knew truthers were delusional in many instances, but it's actually scary where this is heading. And I agree. It actually is quite scary, especially if you look at certain, like these huge, huge truthers who are still kind of saying, oh, a certain president is coming back and this and that. And, you know, like the entire hopium they're spreading is just insanity. How is it that none of our cakes followers caught him switching names of his partner in crime? He switched name of the guy that was with him on the night of that crime. He went from calling him Joey to John, back to Joey and back to John. Joey, John. Yeah, it's a different name. I agree. Joey comes from Joseph, right? Or like, I mean, Joey and John are not the same name typically. So usually it's like Johnny and, and John, but yeah, whatever. Um, so there are a lot of interesting comments below this video. You can pull it up yourself. Basically the gist of this channel is, and this is like chalk body outline. It's kind of just highlighting how he might be uh, paid off by CIA or like the three letter agency uh, agencies, how he'd kind of just be paid off by them to spread all the stuff that he's saying. I got comments on my own channel where people were basically all about, oh, he's spreading hopium. He's always like in the saver mentality. A few other comments were like, he always gives these huge predictions like 17 years from now or 2040 or like this and that. Never like, oh, two months from now or a year from now or this and that. So that in 17 years from now, he might not even really be around. He, he's just going to do another spin on the story. You know, the way the New Agers kind of did it in 2020 or like in 2000, where they were saying, yeah, in 2012, the old world's going to fall away. The Mayan calendar ends and then 20, 2012 comes along and nothing really happens in that sense. Kind of in a similar way, just for the truth of community. So I found those comments really interesting too, because I was like, yeah, it's kind of true. He gives these predictions and it's always like in that savior mentality, kind of being like giving your power away to, oh yeah, just trust the plan, just do this, whatever. I also find his voice a bit monotonous. Um, there's not a whole lot of whatever in it, you know, a whole lot of excitement and a whole lot of this and that. What really struck me about it, other than the X to begin with, is his logo though, you know? I mean, I don't know if he had someone do his logo. If he did, it could have very well been one of these three letter agencies. The music to it is so dark. It's actually quite horrendous, to be honest with you. Like when you just energetically tap into these things, sound makes a huge effect. Sound can really hypnotize you, put you under a spell or make you feel really uncomfortable. The music of the logo is so uncomfortable to me that I can't even really play it. I'm not going to play it for this video anyhow, um, just because of certain you know copyright reasons and everything. But if you actually play his logo, and there's also this Phoenix logo, and his entire thing is always about the Phoenix this and Phoenix that, like the false agenda with that. But the logo, when first of all, the entire spinning of the logo in the beginning, we're talking about this one that you see on the screen. What I see in it at the very end is actually like a face in it. And it's similar to when you see like the BBC logo or CNN logo, you know, the way they spin the news, the news agency logos, the way they spin before they start with a new show, the logo has hidden stuff in it that's meant to hypnotize people more, put them more under a spell. And that's why it's always so flashy. It's always like, no, 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 it's, it's so flashy and you can barely, with a conscious mind, you can barely see what's going on, but when you slow-mo it, you see all these things in there, similar to how Walt Disney would put certain caricatures in his own cartoons that 
you wouldn't necessarily pick up on it and unless you really pay attention to it that's similar to how the, these logos are doing it so the huge newsletter agencies do that and his logo also has that i also saw it in a few logos of um new cagers at one point but his logo definitely has like a weird face in it at the end and it's spinning so fast that you almost can't pick up on it unless you really pay attention to it also in the beginning of it you know we kind of just there's this random like symbol you know all these like tree of life symbols or th these random symbols that kind of drag you down into the underworld and all of that so it's very intense. That logo in and of itself for me is already very, very telltale. Something's off, something's wrong. Why would you put a logo like that in front of all your videos unless you want to hypnotize your crowd, put something on them, put them under a spell and uh, all those things. Now, a personal insight that I kind of just got on this overall um, is, let me just pull up my notes here. I got like random notes. Um, okay, so first of all, the X is always in the way. So the X comes from the time of when Jesus supposedly died at the cross. That narrative, I wanna talk about it in a different video, but the X was hijacked by the Vatican and Christianity in general. And the biggest crimes have been committed in, with, with the X, with faith, with religion, with, with just the cross in general. Okay, so the X is a very dark symbol in and of itself. Um, the X has to do with suffering, enslavement, and just overall, the X puts people under a spell. So anyone who has an X somewhere in their name is already very suspicious. The X also has to do with the archaic realm. So archaics, archaic, the, the archangels, you know, all of that is the same. So it has to do with this world that's kind of built up by demonic AI, arch, arch angelic stuff that really kind of just drags you further into their realm. And you don't really want to be in that realm. Let's put it that way. It's just kind of muddles you in there, confuses you even more. And I do strongly believe that people like archaics are meant to just mislead people in general. The cross symbol keeps it keeps everything hidden. You know, it keeps everything in the dark. Um, it enforces a soul trap and all those things. But I wanna talk about the cross in and of itself in a different video, just because it's like so, so important um, to point that out on another way. So it's not that archaics has much to do with that in and of itself, but he uses the ax, he uses the cross. Why does he do that? You know, just like kind of the assumption of this other person who did a review on him, is he paid off by these three letter agencies? Like, are they people who are in jail? Are they kind of just getting these people who were in jail and kind of using them for their own agenda so that they get released earlier or what, what really happens. Was this person really in jail? I mean, his jail story doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Something doesn't add up here. What really happened? Is this person a liar? You know, his body language isn't really honest. I do have to say that. There's a lot of stuff in his body language which, is, which kind of makes me personally believe he's a liar. I do have to say that too. Um, so there's just a lot that goes into that. But in short, that's kind of what I had to say on this person. The review is not going to be extremely long because I'm not actually reviewing his stuff. I don't see much reason to it. Just the fact that this person is lying about his prison sentence and what he was really in jail for or in prison for. And just the fact that he has a logo like this that drags people further under a hypnosis or spell that has dubious symbology in it is already more than enough for me personally. So I'm going to end it with that. I hope it helps. Let me know if you want any more reviews, what you think. Uh, I know a lot of people are falling for people like these, but anyone who kind of blows out out of nowhere within a matter of months is always suspicious in my opinion. And uh, yeah, until then, have a wonderful one. Enjoy your day and um, bye.